this is Reaper here, and today I'm bringing you a League of Legends guide on Jarvan the Fourth, the Exemplar of Demacia. This is going to be a Season Five Jungle guide. Um, if you've been following our channel the last uh, for Season Five, anyways, we've been doing some gameplay uh, footage with our guides um, in a different video. Like there's a full gameplay video and then our detailed guide. So this is going to be the detailed guide. I will have the link for the full gameplay in the description below, um, or you can go to our channel and hit the playlist and the Season Five playlist. There will be the full gameplay. Anyways, on to Jarvan. We're going to be going over his abilities, masteries, runes, and an item build I like to use with him in the jungle. Um, Jarvan is a, is a pretty tanky um, champion. Um, so if you're wanting more damage in your team, you might try to pick another champion. But he's a good crowd control uh, champion. He can get into fights uh, with his initiation, with his abilities. And he can also jump and single out a enemy that y'all are wanting to get or you know he can use his abilities to get out of a battle um, so you don't necessarily have to use flash if you don't want to maybe you can take ghost or smite even um, uh, but you will be taking uh, I mean uh, ignite not smite of course you'll be taking smite um, but I do take flash too so it give me a you know double getaway if I have to so let's go ahead and get into his abilities. Starting off with his passive, Martial Cadence. Driving the Force, initial basic attack on a target deals bonus physical damage. This effect cannot occur again on the same target for a short duration. So your initial attack, like it says, basically with against anything, whether it's a minion or a champion, is going to do increased damage. And then after a few seconds, um, you know, you can get off of that champion or minion or whatever and go back and hit him again and do additional damage again. Um, Dragon Strike is Q. Jarvan the Fourth extends his lance, dealing physical damage and lowering the armor of all enemies in its path. Additionally, this will pull Jarvan to his Demacian standard, knocking up enemies in his path. So it's like a combo move. Um, well, it's going to reduce the armor of any champions you hit, and it's going to do a, a good amount of damage. This is actually going to be the first ability you max out. But using his E, if you put down your flag, your standard first, and then you Q, it'll pull you to it. That's what his combo I was talking about earlier, that you can get into fights really quickly and you can get out of fights or, you know, get away from the enemies uh, really quickly using that. Just remember to wait for the animation. It's like a, you know, half a second, but if you don't do it, if you do it too fast, you're going to Q and not E. So just remember that. Um, Golden Aegis W. Jarvan the Fourth calls upon the ancient kings of Damascus to shield him from harm and slow surrounding enemies. So this gives you a little bit of a shield, not too much. It's like maybe one attack, and then its um, primary deal that I like though is the slow. So it you know helps slow down any enemies chasing your teammates or from getting away from you. The Damasian Standard. Jarvan the Fourth car carries the pride of Damasia, passively granting him bonus attack speed and armor. Activating Damascus Standard allows Jarvan to place a, dam a Damascus flag that deals magic damage on impact and grants attack speed to nearby allied champions. So it has several great things about it. Um, its passive is going to increase your attack speed and armor. The uh, Activating it will do damage when it hits. It's going to increase your allies' attack speed. And it will also allow you to use your Q to pull yourself to them. Now, when you do the combo also, when you hit your E and then you Q to your uh, standard, any enemy champions caught in uh, between it will be knocked up. So that's one form of CC. So you have three forms of CC with your W using your EQ combo and then your ultimate cataclysm. Jarvan the fourth heroically leaps into battle at a target with such force that he terraforms the surrounding area to create an area around them so that they cannot pass through it. Anyways, um, they can flash through it, they can um, pounce out of it if uh, certain champions that have that but um, they're not going to be able to run through it, okay? Now this goes for your allies too, okay? If they get caught in it, you can always, you hit R to activate it on the champion, and you can also hit R again to knock the walls down. You're still going to do the damage, of course. Um, it's not like a dot or anything like that. So very good um, ultimate, in my opinion. You can use your EQ combo to get in there, and then if they're still running away, it does have some range on it, so you can jump on them from a good distance and do a good amount of damage. All right, let's go ahead and jump into his uh, masteries. All right, so in his masteries, uh, we'll go with a 21 and 9. You can also do a tanky mastery build if you are needing to be the tank of the team. Um, but we'll take the um, double-edged sword, the sorcery for the cooldown reduction, brute force, martial mastery, executioner, warlord, Blade weaving, spell weaving, devastating attacks, and havoc. And then on the defensive side, we'll take the um, tough skin for the 
um, neutral monsters in the jungle. Block, Unyielding, Veteran Scars, and Juggernaut. If, you know, if you're going to be going more of a, a tank, you might take the uh, this roll right here. I'm not going to go over all this stuff really too fast. Um, but it just depends on what your team needs um, at the time, you know, when you're picking your champions and stuff in the lobby and stuff of that nature. So, you know, take a look at what you need and decide whether you're going to be more damage or defensive on that. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into his runes. Okay, guys, so in the runes, I'm going to build tanky in my runes. My masteries, I'll change a little bit whether I'm going to go with, uh, for damage or for tank. But in my runes, I pretty much always build a uh, tank with Jarvan. So we're going to go with the greater marks of armor that additional armor boost in the beginning, the seals of armor, and then the scaling magic resist on the glyphs. Um, the quince is where I'm going to get some attack damage to help me a little bit with clearing the jungle, but I pretty much go full tank on the uh, runes because it, I believe it helps Jarvan out uh, more than not. Okay, um, I've seen people build attack speed with Jarvan. I've never really built attack speed with Jarvan. Um, maybe in the very beginning I did a little bit, but n no, I just at attack damage and tank. Um, most of the time I go full on tank, but um, a lot of times I will I will do uh, do attack damage. I'm sorry, I'm starting a little bit. It's kind of late tonight, so um, I'm not arguing with people who say attack speed on Jarvan. Um, I've just I've never had really any luck with it, and I've never went against anybody that's ever had any luck with it. So I've I've generally take attack damage and tank on Jarvan. Okay, let's jump into his eye. Okay, again, this is zoomed in. Forgive me for that. I'm sorry. I'm sure y'all don't want to see everything on my damn desktop. Anyways, so, starting. Hunter's Machete, of course, with the jungle. That's no-brainer on the item on that. Health Pots. Uh, warding Totems or Sweeping Lens, whichever you prefer on that. I normally go with the Totem in the beginning and then swap to the Sweeping Lens later after, like, the second recall, but half the time I forget to do that shit anyways. So, pick or choose on that, however you want to. Now, the actual jungle weapon, um, Skirmisher Saber or Ranger's Trailblazer. In the video I took Skirmisher Saber. Um, the Trailblazer would have helped me out in clearing out the jungle. That's what it does. That's what it's meant for. The smite does AoE damage to, you know, of course the smaller um, minions around the big uh, target. I'm sorry, I can't think too well right now. And then it's going to, you know, restore 15% of your missing health and mana. So it's going to help you with sustainability and, and clearing out the jungle faster. The Skirmisher's Blade is really for fighting against the enemy champions. The Smite is going to mark the enemy champion, giving you true damage to him for each attack while it's active for the 6 seconds, giving you vision of them while they're, if they're running away, and it does um, reduces their damage to you. So it will help you out in that too, and being a little tanky against champions on that. Now we will build the Warrior Enchantment or the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut would be for going more tanky, and the Warrior, of course, would be going for more damage. The Warrior is going to give you increased damage, cooldown reduction, and um, armor penetration, whereas the uh, Juggernaut is going to give you increased health and cooldown reduction. So, your choice on those, however the game's going, and however your team needs you to build, or however you, the hell you like to build. The Core, after your uh, jungle weapon's been maxed out, the Black Cleaver is going to give you increased health, attack damage, and cooldown reduction along with armor penetration. It's a good all-around weapon for Jarvan um, in building tanky and doing damage. Um, Ravenous Hydra is going to give you that increased damage, health regain, and some life steal, and it's going to give you AoE damage to help you clear out the jungle faster and some minion waves when you're split pushing or just helping push the lane anyways, whatever you know on that. Now this is a good balanced core um, build because it does have some defensive items, which most likely you will be doing with Jarvan, um, but you don't have to. The um, Randuin's Omen is going to give you increased health and armor. Uh, it's going to reduce the attacker's attack speed with their basic attacks, and then it's also going to actively, if you are usually active, it's going to slow them down. So along with your W, you would have the slow, you would also have this too. Then the uh, Spirit Visage is going to give you increased health, magic resist, health regain, and uh, cooldown reduction and of course increase all of your health or your heals and stuff of that nature. Situational items, if you're wanting to do a little more damage um, along with being tanky, the frozen mallet is never a bad choice really. It's going to give you um, increased health and attack damage and it's also going to slow their movement speed with each basic attack against them. For some um, 
well on some more attack damage and some um, magic resist the mall that mile mortis would uh, be good and then it also will grant you one attack damage for every two percent missing health so it's going to help you with that also upon taking damage uh, magic damage that would reduce health below 30 percent grants you a magic shield for 400 the uh, banshee's veil is going to give you 450 health uh, so magic resist, health regain, and it, the shield on it is uh, the most unique thing about the Banshee's Veil is it blocks any uh, enemy ability to you that's going to damage you. It's going to block it, whatever it is, however harmful it is too. Um, it only does it once and it has a 40 second cooldown um, and then of course it can do it again. So that's a good uh, magic resist item. Armor, uh, we got the Thorn Mail, it's going to give you quite a bit more armor. And then it's also going to do 30% of the basic attack damage to you back to the whoever the hell is attacking you okay pretty good armor item if you're needing to build more armor um, sunfire cape more armor um, some health and it's also going to deal damage to enemy champions you know in the vicinity like really close to you so it's going to help you out and you know being your melee and all that good shit the um the boots you got the mercury treads if you're gonna have there's a lot of enemy cc uh, on their team you might want to take the mercury treads it's also going to give you some uh, magic resist if they have a lot of AD and they're not really any CC um, to speak of or just one CC then uh, you might pick up the Ninja Tabby to do some armor, give you some armor and it's also going to block some um, incoming basic attack damage. If you're wanting to roam you're wanting to have some mobility get around faster or you're snowballing and you're just wanting some speed the boots of swiftness I like um, it gives you increased movement speed at all times okay it's not like the Boots of Moby where it gives you just a little bit more um, movement speed and it gives you a lot of movement speed out of battle. This will give it to you all the time. So with the boots, I really I only uh, take uh, alacrity on the enchantments. I don't really worry about home guards too much, um, depending on the champion. Some of the champions I will. Most of the time it's alacrity though because it gives you that constant all the time movement speed buff. Alright guys, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up with Jarvan. Um, just remember, he's not a the fastest to clear of the jungle but he is okay at it and he's pretty tanky I enjoy playing Jarvan a lot um, like I said in the full gameplay if you have watched that already or if you're going to watch it I say this anyways um, he was a t champion I played for for a while when I first started playing League of Legends and I've gone back to him time and time again and I do enjoy playing Jarvan so and he is a pretty good jum jungle champion and he can also take uh, he can do really good in the top lane too so um, remember on his abilities, max out his Q first, his E second, his W last. First point's going to go in Q, then E, then W, and then max out Q. Um, and his ultimate, remember you can deactivate the walls if you have an ally that's needing to get out of it. Alright, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to it as soon as possible. And if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, check out that link for the full gameplay if you haven't done so already. We'll see you all in the next one.